botanical history was made at the Huntington on August 1st, when what many call the world's largest flower, the Amorphophallus titanum, came into bloom. As far as we know, this is the first flowering of the titanarum in California, and only the 11th publicly recorded in the United States. The event also made institutional history, as record numbers of visitors flocked to the Huntington to see the botanical titan. During the 19 days it was on public view, the Amorphophallus titanum drew an unprecedented total of over 78,000 enthusiastic flower fans, nearly doubling attendance over the same period last year. The attention surrounding the historic bloom provided the Huntington with a unique opportunity to pursue its most important missions, research and education, before a worldwide audience. Television coverage spanned the entire period of flowering, Front page newspaper stories appeared here and around the world, and countless radio interviews and news stories were broadcast. Here is a sampling of the television coverage. It illustrates the great interest there is in the wonder of the natural world, and the Huntington's role in educating people about the conservation of rare plants. Local botanists are anxiously awaiting one of the rarest events in the world of horticulture, the blooming of a really stinky flower. Now on display at the Huntington Library's Botanical Gardens, a plant so rare it has its own security guard. It's causing a sensation here at the Huntington. Attendance has nearly tripled. Everyone wants to get a glimpse. It's so huge, I thought it was a piece of sculpture at first. It's not only the world's largest flower, it has the most unusual scent and that is not necessarily a good thing. The flower, native to Indonesia, is known as the corpse flower, due to its odor, you might have guessed, which many have compared to the smell of dead animals, dirty socks, or rotting vegetables. We are always reminded to stop and smell the flowers. Here at the Huntington, that expression's going to have a whole new meaning starting next week. Plant that big and have a flower that's uh, gonna be four feet in diameter, that's, uh, you can't beat that anywhere. Here it is amongst friends, it's called the stinking flower, but among the scientific crowd, it's the Amorphophallus titanum. It's the world's largest flower. This one's taller than I am, and it's just about ready to bloom. And when it does, the surrounding neighborhood will know. They're coming in droves, plant watchers, staring, mesmerized, and not quite sure what to make of it or how to explain it. The Amorphophallus titanum, also known as Titan Arum, is an equatorial tropical plant and native to Sumatra, one of the islands in Indonesia. It's growing about four inches a day. It came to the Huntington as a gift from a Phoenix collector who started the seed and delivered a bulb that weighed about 45 pounds. Flower bloomed back in 1878 for the first time. At Kew, people fainted because of the flower's odor. And people are going to line up to watch this happen the next time? Indeed, an olfactory outrage. But in the rainforests of Sumatra, that's how it attracts bugs to pollinate. The first to bloom in California, only the 11th to bloom in cultivation in the world. And there's a steady stream of stopped noses keeping up the flower watch. Big, stinky, and most say well worth the wait. If you go to Sumatra or Borneo to search for this flower, you may never see it no matter how many trips you take. It's, it's like having the queen come and visit, you know, or, the, or, or, or some notable person who you'll never see again. It's known that this flower heats up right before it blooms, so JPL has brought in its infrared camera, normally used to observe objects in space. In fact, the plant's gotten about 10 degrees warmer since about three hours ago, so it's definitely heating up. Which means it's, it's ready pretty soon. Which means it's getting closer to blooming. You know, the Huntington is usually closed on Mondays, but because this is such an incredible event, tomorrow this place will be open to the public, so you'll be able to come, see, and smell. If you want to observe this from your own homes, you can do that. You can uh, take a look at the Huntington website or the JPL website. That way you can look without having to smell. The mighty Titan Arum only offers a foul odor when it blooms. The one here at the Huntington began opening up yesterday. You don't have to put it under a microscope to come up with a scientific reason for the smell that seeps from its dark center. It's not to attract flies, but dung and carrion beetles. They're tricked into thinking that's a dead animal, and they're crawling around down, and they're looking for the dead animal, and in the process, they pollinate the plant. It's the corpse flower. 
Sure. Now, what's the name? It's called the corpse flower, and you can smell. It smells awful for like you can smell it like two miles away. Why? Tell us why. Cause it's just natural like that. At a botanical garden near Los Angeles, the sweet smell of success smells suspiciously like roadkill. A giant tropical plant known affectionately as the corpse flower blossomed this past week in San Marino, California, drawing thousands of visitors who just couldn't pass up the chance to take a whiff. Uh, it should take another couple of hours before it's completely unfurled. Again, the process just began a couple of hours ago. Kind of an interesting story here. Uh, people have been coming out here for days hoping to see the blooming process. Well, wouldn't you know it, didn't start until about 4.30 this afternoon. That's closing time at the Huntington. I guess you can call this a bashful bloom. Talk about a photo op. Everyone wants a picture of this plant. NASA has a thermocam here, the Guinness record keepers, a time-elapsed camera. And why not? It isn't every day you can see the world's largest flower bloom. And I've been coming, the professor and I, we've been coming since last week, before it even started opening. Let's check it out, Gustavo. Well, Trisha, you mentioned record numbers have been coming to the library. 96%, that is how much the attendance has increased in the past couple of weeks, all to see the world's tallest and also the world's stinkiest flower. Curiously, anticipation has only been in the last couple of weeks because three weeks ago, this plant was not visible. This, it was a corm, and the whole thing has grown in the last two and a half weeks. People who have watched it have kept good timelines. So we have chronologies that tell us what day certain things should happen, and it's happened pretty much on target. That's why we were able to guess that Monday would be the day it would open. And it all happens in a period of just a few hours. Yes, indeed, people are taking pictures, even painting pictures, to remember this giant flower so that something remains after it wilts away. That this is causing a bigger stink <coughs> excuse me, than when Prince Charles showed up. I mean, a lot of cameras are here for Prince Charles, but the crowds, nothing like they've come here for the corpse flower. And these are photographs from the Huntington Library website. As you can see, that large petal around the central sheath is beginning to open. It has drawn, as you can see, their camera people, crowds. They had 7,000 people between 10.30 and noon today. Now, it's only going to be in bloom for about three days. So I can just imagine the Huntington is going to be very busy. They might have to extend their hours like LACMA did for the Van Gogh exhibit. <laughs> Our final story tonight is about an unearthly stench, now packing them in by the thousands in California. CBS's Bill Whitaker sniffed out this story. It's the grandest Hollywood opening, well, ever. Thousands and thousands lining up on a stinking hot day at the Huntington Gardens near Pasadena to be among the privileged few to witness the Amorphophallus titanum in bloom. People just can't get enough. Anybody know how many people here today? The line seems endless. Thousands waiting up to two hours in the blistering sun to glimpse a rare sight. You don't think that's crazy? Uh, no, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, really. It's very interesting. It's amazing. <laughs> it's worth having to see. Well, we're trying to perform a little bit of botanical surgery on this. We're trying to self-pollinate this plant, which is ordinarily impossible. So we're trying to do a little surgery by taking the stamens off ahead of time, digging the pollen out, okay. and fertilizing the females. Folks here have been trying to extend the life of this attraction. They're using a high-powered humidifier to make it feel at home. You see, the plant is from a tropical climate, Sumatra in Indonesia. It doesn't like the dry. So people are snapping pictures as fast as they can. This is a limited engagement of only three days, which is why the lines are so long. And no one knows when or if this rotten performer will ever appear again. Well, after a great deal of anticipation, fanfare, and celebration, the stinky corpse flower is taking its final bow. Tomorrow will be the last day to view the rare beauty. Bill Smith has the final chapter in this smelly story. <laughs> yes, the party's over. The flower, famous for its flagrant fragrance, is finished. Now, in its long-awaited full-blossom glory, this flowering six-footer was glorious enough to become a world-famous star overnight. But beauty fades, and fame is fickle. Today, the faithful found the immortal Phalus had flopped, like a Hollywood hunk whose best days are over. Still, his fans came from near and far. But hey, this is Hollywood, so stay tuned. 
Next week, the pollination experiment's results will be in. Maybe we smell a sequel in the works. Oh, normally during a three-week period in summer, the Huntington draws about 20,000 people. But this summer, because of you, 70,000 people. And rather than remember you as you are now, let's remember you as you were. Excitement over the corpse flower demonstrates some of what the botanical gardens at the Huntington can accomplish. The television clips remind us there is great public interest in the world of plants. Completion of the Gardens Initiative will focus on the building of a botanical conservatory where we hope to teach children and families about plants using the world's most intriguing and celebrated examples. The conservatory will be a wonderful setting for visitors to explore the universe of plants in great detail right here at the Huntington. With every visit, people will not only learn more about plants, but come to appreciate the importance of their conservation. Mr. Huntington loved botanical rarities, so we're sure he would think this spectacular bloom is a fitting way to celebrate the end of the millennium. We believe he would be pleased that the new botanical complex will be a vital resource to our community in the next century.